If you look at the best wide receivers in 2012, you will notice a few big names, such as Calvin Johnson, AJ Green, and Des Bryant. You also had other wide receivers tearing it up that season like Brandon Marshall and Andre Johnson. The point is, the 2012 NFL season consisted of plenty of stars who were receivers, and one of those receivers tearing it up in 2012 was a man by the name of Michael Crabtree. After attending Texas Tech for two years, Michael Crabtree put on a show as he had over 3,100 receiving yards in his college career. Crabtree played so well in college that he was the second wide receiver selected in the NFL draft. He would go on to have what seemed like a pretty good career. His time in San Francisco seemed good as he played better than the average player, but after 2014, his time in SF was over. He would sign with the Oakland Raiders and during his time in Oakland, he was involved in one of the biggest fights of the 2010s. His career was still in a decent spot, but was regressing. It was after 2017 when Crabtree's career took a bad hit. He would last two more seasons in the NFL after announcing his retirement at just 32 years old. So let me ask the question. What happened to Michael Crabtree? Before we can answer that question, let's look at his story to see how he got to the NFL. Michael Crabtree was born and raised in Dallas, Texas. When he was in high school, he played three sports, basketball, football, and track. Something you may not know about Crabtree was when he was in high school, he played quarterback, and he played well. In his senior year, he had 870 passing yards with 11 touchdowns and went 45 for 100 in completions. The man was not only a beast when it came to passing, but also running. He ran for 646 yards and had 9 touchdowns with 100 carries. I think you get the point. Michael Crabtree was a beast when in high school, but when he went to college, things only got better and better. When choosing which college he would go to, he was in a rough spot. Texas was recruiting him and the coaches wanted Crabtree to play defense, which Crabtree refused to do because he wanted to get some touchdowns. He was offered a scholarship from universities like Baylor, Illinois, Iowa, Kansas State, Oklahoma, Texas A&M, Texas Tech, and Kansas. So out of all of the universities, which one did he choose? Texas Tech. Crabtree attended Texas Tech for two years and dominated college football. In his first season, he had a little under 2,000 receiving yards with 134 receptions and 22 touchdowns. The team finished the season with a total record of 9-4. Then came 2008, his last season before declaring for the NFL Draft. Crabtree played incredible once more as he had 1,165 receiving yards with 97 receptions and 19 touchdowns. These stats were amazing and got NFL scouts going crazy. Teams had a lot of interest in him, and when looking at some mock drafts, he was projected to be a pretty high draft pick. Both Bleach Report and The Guardian had Crabtree going fourth overall in the draft, meaning fans looked at Crabtree like he could be the next big thing. The 2009 NFL Draft would come around, and he dropped down to the 10th pick where the San Francisco 49ers selected him, a team who had some vital parts on the roster, but was missing a couple of pieces to be serious contenders. It took a couple years, but Michael Crabtree was one part of the answer to contention. His NFL career started slowly as he was improving as much as expected. In his rookie season, he played in 11 games and had 625 receiving yards with 2 touchdowns and 48 receptions. This isn't bad, but he could be better and he needed some time to progress if he wanted to be a superstar. 2010 and 2011 were two seasons where Crabtree was improving. His receiving yards went up season by season, and in 2010 he had six touchdowns. His PFF grade in 2011 came in at 79.4, which is pretty good. But then came 2012, where Crabtree had his career year. Before we get to Crabtree, let's look at this Niners team. They finished the season going 11-4-1 and had an explosive Colin Kaepernick, a prime Frank Gore, plus the best O-line in the NFL, and one of the best defenses. These guys were good. Really good. And one reason why the offense was tearing it up was because of Crabtree. In 2012, he had over 1,100 receiving yards with 85 receptions and 9 touchdowns. That gave him a PFF grade of 91. He somehow did not make the Pro Bowl that season. Maybe it's because there were plenty of talented receivers that season, but I don't know. He definitely deserved that spot on the Pro Bowl roster. 2012 could have been the start to something big for Crabtree. This could have been the season that allowed him to turn into a beast. 2013 came around, and he looked like he was going to run it back and be that stud he was in 2012. However, that was not the case. Crabtree underwent surgery in 2013 for a torn Achilles tendon. That injury caused for him to play just 5 games in 2013, and after that injury, 
He never really retaliated like in 2012. In 2014, he had 698 receiving yards with 69 receptions. One reason why he wasn't putting up the same stats probably had to do with the fact he was no longer the number one receiver on the team. He dropped down to two and Anquan Bolden took the spot of wide receiver one. 2014 was the final year of Crabtree's contract with the Niners. During the offseason, he decided it was time for a new home. He signed with the Oakland Raiders for a season. In Oakland, he was still the second option as a wide receiver. Number one was Amari Cooper, which was a no-brainer because there's no way John Gruden would put Crabtree over Cooper. Even though he was the second option, he still put up some nice stats. He had a respectable 922 receiving yards with 85 receptions and 9 touchdowns. His catch percentage came in at 58.2%. Crabtree slightly improved in 2015, then in 2016, he cracked 1,000 receiving yards again. 1,003 receiving yards with 89 receptions and 8 touchdowns is not bad whatsoever. He did this while still being the second option as wide receiver. His PFF grade came in at 79.2. Then in 2017, he was involved in one of the biggest fights in recent NFL history. The beef of Akeem Tlaib and Michael Crabtree is a long story, but to summarize it, here's what happened. Basically, the two had an altercation at the beginning of their career. When Tlaib played in Tampa and Crabtree was in San Fran, the two had an argument that didn't cause a fight, but these guys developed some beef. The beef continued on for a few years until 2017, when Tlaib wanted to embarrass Crabtree. Both men were holding back a ton of anger. Tlaib and Crabtree had two altercations in the game with Denver and Oakland. The first one was more of the two talking. Tlaib tried to pull Crabtree's chain off, but failed to do so. It was then the second altercation when all hell broke loose. Tlaib successfully snapped his chain off and the two went at it. Besides the fight, Crabtree's 2017 season was alright. He had 618 receiving yards with 8 touchdowns and 58 receptions. PFF gave him a grade of 72. 2018 would be Crabtree's final season with the Raiders. 607 receiving yards with 3 touchdowns and 54 receptions is not much. In 2019, Crabtree signed a 1 year deal with the Arizona Cardinals. Crabtree started in just one game with the team until he was cut. And after the 2019 season, Crabtree officially announced his retirement from the league at just 32 years old. So let me ask the question, what happened to Michael Crabtree? From being a top 10 wide receiver in the NFL at one point in his career to now being forgotten. The only explanation that would make sense is that Crabtree got injured and it heavily affected his career. He missed what could have been the season that allowed him to remain the top receiver in the league. He suffered a severe injury that allowed him to never put up the same stats. And because of this injury, he dropped down the second option for a wide receiver and never retaliated. And as time went along, he regressed more and more. Crabtree could have been one of the best wide receivers in football, but now he's a one-year wonder. And as of today, I'm not sure what Crabtree is doing when it comes to jobs, but I do know he's living his life as he tweets about Texas Tech's football team, and he tweets about enjoying life to the fullest. Crabtree still had a great career, and we must respect him for his incredible run. Besides that, that is going to be it for today's video, guys. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed. If you're new to the channel, please consider to leave a like and subscribe. I would really appreciate that. And as always, I will see you all in the next video. I'm out.